Okay, so last week I did a survey among the, my subscribers to see which distribution of Linux should I review next and I put as a joke option Temple OS and of course Temple OS won that poll and I thought I'm just going to disregard completely the result of the elections just like many politicians and I'll go with XFCE but my subscribers informed me that the results are actually binding and I actually have to look into Temple OS as you're seeing. So I actually opened it up. And first of all, let me say that Temple OS has no easy way to change the keyboard layout, which is a big issue for me because I use the Dvorak layout, which means that I actually had to bring up another keyboard which had the QRT layout to actually see what, what key to press. So now that I've done that, I can actually use it. So as you can see, this is like, this is the star screen. I, it's asking me here on the left, whether I want to take a tour and the answer to that is actually yes. And of course it didn't work. It's working. Let's try again. Okay, so take a tour and my answer is yes. Okay, it worked. So this is the tour. I can actually, I think use the mouse. There's mouse support, which is something that shocked me given the interface, which looks like, I don't know, very older than me for sure. So the help system, the basics, let's try to click on the basics. Yes, I can actually click it. And I have this pop-up that actually is telling me how to use it. And I can even drag it around and stuff, which is very advanced for sure. I can resize it. You're now at the command line. The syntax is like C, C++, except that you don't need parentheses if there are no arguments. Type dear and press enter, okay? So like this. And... Yes, uh, okay. What is this window? Why am I able to resize this? Okay, okay. Okay, so clicking on the title bar of a window does not bring it to top, which is possibly a problem, but maybe the menu is like always on top, which would make sense. Okay, I've done it. Okay. Press Ctrl M. This will access your personal menu. You can customize it. Okay, it's very nice. I'm, I'm from KDE, so I like stuff that you can actually customize. It's like your start menu and desktop. Okay, so Ctrl M. You can also get to your personal menu by clicking the word menu in the title bar. So where is it? Menu. Okay. Okay. Let's press OK. Press course on down nine times. Keyboard commands are space, left action, enter, right action, ask, save and exit, and shift, ask, abort and exit. Okay, so I can at least say that this tour is actually very straightforward and helps you directly. Like when I wasn't able to press the right button on the keyboard, a pop-up popped up saying, no, you have to press this key. So it's very nice that the first user experience is very nice. Even though I know nothing about this operating system, it, uh, it's very clear. So let's try to, okay, I need to press okay and then, okay. The macro changed directories and did a bigger command. The red file names are links. Left clicking them will view them. Right clicking them or pressing enter when the cursor is on top will bring up a menu of options. The blue underline entries, okay, are macros and will change directory directories. Okay, makes sense. Let's try to open up something like, I don't know, load test. Okay, seems like it did uh, nothing. 
Press Ctrl T to toggle plain text mode. Okay. Whoa. The, the other view was much better. The doll dock widgets are bracketed with dollar sign characters. LK stands for link. MA stands for macro. Okay, makes sense. Now Ctrl T to get back to sanity. And that was it. So I have passed part two. So I could like go on, but let's actually try to use this one. Okay, wait a minute. Part 11 is just called wow. What's this? Now I'm curious. Okay, all text widgets work everywhere. The type command is like the DOS command of the same name of the Unix cat. Okay, we will now send your menu document to the command line. If it uses the C document format and the icons are even active, press enter. Okay, it looks very nice. Type can also be used with .gr files. Probably skipping so many parts of the guide was not a good idea, but I did it anyway. So let's go with done and let's start using this. Okay, so now I'm at a home. Let's actually beard this. Okay, there seems to be nothing, makes sense. And I see that there are fun games. There are unfun games. Okay, I like the distinction between fun games and games not so fun. There are also good scraps and none games. Okay. Let's try, I don't know, Bomber Golf as an icon that looks very nice. Okay, so before I pop up some game, let me see right away some comments on the general design. Uh, there are too many like moving parts to this that, to this operating system. Like the cursor is blinking. It should not okay, the cursor is blinking. It's fair that the cursor is big blinking, but the title bar is always animated. The menu button keeps on popping up. It's a bit annoying to see so many stuff moving when I'm not even touching the keyboard. But anyway, let's try to pop up this Bomber Golf. Where is my mouse? Okay. Okay. Interesting. How do I... Okay, so I've got... The graphic is very nice. Seems to be a bit slow. How do I do anything in this game? Okay, it's super laggy. So laggy, okay. And probably I have to hit the targets. So let's try to... Come on, it's so slow. Okay, this one I can eat, come on. Nope. Okay, I don't like this game anymore. Let's go back. Okay, so exiting the game was very straightforward. I was worried that it was going to be like Vim and I was going to keep on getting stuck. So let's try Varum. I love the name Varum. So arrow keys, I guess. So laggy. I guess I should like, I should have tried to install it on an actual machine to get nice performance so I can uh, okay I got past this purple car let's go on we're doing nicely let's not hit that other okay don't eat it okay very nice and now we can actually do this okay okay and this is why I don't have a car in real life. Could be worse. Okay, so another design issue of this operating system is that in order to press a key multiple times, you have like, when you actually hold a key, it will register the first time it's pressed. And then you have 
to wait like half a second for it to continue, you know, being pressed. So that's very annoying. What if I just go forward without thinking? Okay, it works. Well, the game looks really nice. It's only, I think, 16 colors, so that was impressive. And then there's like code scraps. What's Struth, which looks uh, like a nice rocket. Okay. So I can do this. So I could like, if I had read the instruction that is, I could like, okay, so I can move it, okay. And then spring between. Okay, it's actually very intuitive. Connector. Yes. Nice. Thruster. This one. This one. Maybe I need to do this. Okay, so I have a thruster. It's very nice. I like it. Well, there are like few programs. I guess these are programs out of the box, but they seem to be very interesting. What's three checkers? Size, let's go with two, please. Ooh, okay, so this, these are links, so I have to like click on two. I know, um, enter is the right action and space is the right one. Step on the link midpoints, okay. Okay. What do you mean with step on the... I'm very confused by this. Okay, so I guess I need to do like put them in a row or something and the background colors is the turn. It's very hard to actually guess what's going on, but okay. So what else do we have? So, okay. In theory, I had seen that there was somewhere like a pop-up menu with all of the shortcuts, which is very nice. I mean, I don't know how to bring that up, honestly, but we have an uh, interesting uh, global menu, which is hidden by default. Good idea, I think. The UI is already a bit cluttered, so it's very nice to actually hide by default the stuff that's not needed. And then I can actually go like here's there's insert and if I click on this, how do I actually how do I actually select anything because it disappears? Okay, so very bad UI because I can actually make the global menu pop-ups actually pop up and I cannot actually use them because they close even if I click on edit they don't work so let's try to use a keyboard how do I like this okay so F7 okay so it's very nice that when you select something you can see what keyboard shortcut you need to use it so let's actually try with God work, which is F7. Where, where is it? Okay, F7. Where is my F7? Oops, I didn't want to open up this game, sorry. This game look, looks really good though. I don't know how it works, but it looks very good. I like it. Okay, so let's get back. I was trying to press F7 
to trigger God word, God the um, God's word. Sorry. For past, okay. Morrow, thirst, hollow, frantic, sixteenth, gifts, hurried, skin, weights, incensed. Okay, interesting. So we are getting some random words from the Bible, I guess. And then I've also seen Shift F7. which actually cleared the screen, what happened? Okay, so it seems like it's stuck. Nine. Okay, so it took a bit, but it actually popped up. Judges 8.13 was up and could a young man of the man of Sukkoth and inquired of him, and he described unto him the princes of Sukkot, and the elders therefore, thereof, even threescore and seventeen men. Is this an actual Bible passage? Uh, Judges is what? Judah? Let me actually try to google it. No, uh, it can't be Judah. Judah didn't write anything. Judges. Let me... Okay, so it actually exists, and yeah, it talks about this place called Sukkoth. So apparently this macro takes a random piece of the Bible. Interesting choice, but I mean, it's called Temple OS, so I did see that coming. <laughs> then what else do we have in this insert menu? Like, there's this option God Song, but uh, I don't. Uh, I think it's, um, sounds doesn't work through virtual machines, so I, pro I won't probably hear anything. Okay, thank you, go for it. Okay. Okay, interesting, so I'm sorry, what? The Holy Spirit can puppet you? What does that even mean? <laughs> so this is to actually generate a random number, which makes sense. I've read that the author of this, I, I mean, I've read about the author a bit, so I try to not talk about too much about it, but apparently he thought he was talking to God through random gener generated numbers, so it makes sense for him to actually have a random generators of numbers in the operating system. So I've got two, three, five, and that was it. Three numbers is what I'm going to get. So I can't actually go away from this, so let's go with Control M to get back to the menu. He lied, he, this didn't bring me back to the menu at all. And now it freeze, froze again. Thank you, Temple OS. But I gotta say, now that it's frozen, frozen, it's very nice to see nothing moving. This cost, constant title bar that switches to the left, so annoying. Okay, so I'm back to the menu and let me say one more thing about design. It's actually very nice to see the design of the scroll bar. It has a very interesting design because it actually lacks any visual representation of how much you're viewing. Usually the height of the scroll bar indicates how much of the page you're viewing. But in this case, you're just seeing the index, the vertical index that you're viewing, which is very nice. So it allows for a very minimalistic scroll bar. And it's also interesting that even though I cannot scroll horizontally, 
I still have this horizontal scroll bar, which is just stuck there, logically. And what do I have? So, list of all sims in alphabetic order. Let's try to go for it. Okay, so these are seams, apparently. I'm not sure what they are represented by. I see many commands that seem to be C++ commands, so I guess this is a bit of a, yes, define string, keyword, global variable. So these seem to be a guide to Holy C, which is the programming language used by Temple OS. Interesting choice of name. Holy C is the same as Holy C, which is, you know, the country where the Pope lives, which is in Italy, like me. And what about flop? Flop butt. Play, press space to flop. Okay. Interesting. So I've got a butt, and since it's a butt, I only see it through ultrasounds, and I can flop. Okay, but are there like obstacles or something? It has a very nice animation of actually flapping. You can see the, how do you call them in English? Wings go up and down. Very nice. But I still don't see the point of this game if there's no obstacle to avoid. Is this a, a fun game or a non-fun game? Okay, so interesting that we have a bugs indicator. Also, if we give a look to the window, you can see that trying to drag them. Ah, I'm actually supposed to fetch those black things, which are bugs. Okay, now I understand it. And there's even like a eating animation. I love it. I want to see it again. Please eat that bug. Super nice, like yum, okay. And you can see that I can actually drag this application around through the sides and the bottom as well. And to actually resize them vertically, I have the whole bottom part. What about horizontally? Is this to okay? So the top left, the top left part is to drag it, bottom right to resize it. Interesting concept. Maybe this could be applied to some kind of windows in other, I mean, this isn't a Linux distribution, but maybe this could be applied to some Linux distribution. What else do we have here? So we have seen God World, we have seen God Passage, and I think I've seen most of the stuff that was inside of this operating system, at least most of the stuff that was thrown in your face. Budget. Autocomplete. Budget, budge, budgeness, budger, budgeo, budget, budgie. Okay, so this application, sorry, this system, this operating system has autocomplete, but it lacks keyboard layout. Seriously. I even get a jukebox. And I, mean, I think that's pretty much it for me. I don't see much else to... There's a search. So 
it's amazing that we have a global search, meaning that Temple OS officially supports like Baloo. How do I actually search? Where is it? Search. Control Shift F. So let's try it. Find. Hi. And I can even replace. Okay. And it's it has like using this operating system, I can see it has a very interesting concept of everything is like a text that you're modifying and this text could have like hyperlinks or commands you can ex execute, macros. It's very interesting. And I guess that those macros actually edit the, pro the text itself. I like it. I still have this autocomplete menu pop-up that I can use to, I don't know, high image F7. What? I pressed high image and it popped up high fallen. Okay, I guess. And now autocomplete is angry with me and is in standby. But very interesting that we actually get autocomplete. So there's also a pull down menu, which is this one. Okay. Good idea, I think. And then the personal menu, which is customizable, which is, sorry, this one. And I have like my directories, graphics, multi-core games, doll doc. Where they did open up the old dog. I never know. Maybe here? No, this is home. Okay. So this is Temple OS 5.03. Latest, latest version as always. Okay, so there's a button came up. What does this Okay, so I can actually change the keyboard shortcuts. Interesting. At least some keyboard. Okay, so now we've got more keyboard shortcuts. Takes a bit to actually show them all, but okay, I guess. It's weird that this operating system seems a bit slow, maybe it's because it's in a VM, but it, as an operating system, it seems very minimalistic to me, so I thought, I thought it was going to be a bit more, you know, fast, but okay, I guess it's usable. There's a lot of stuff that blinks when it shouldn't. And lastly, before getting back to normal, <laughs> getting back to a normal operating system. Sorry, I didn't actually want to open that up. Sorry. Face away from the sun in the, okay. Spacewalk, level one, okay. Size food, okay, go for it. Okay, so there's a solar storm. It's a bit sad to see so many nice, potentially nice games with good graphics and I cannot understand anything of them. Like, I, I can see there might be something very cool going on, but I just don't understand it. Okay. Face away from the solar, like this, I guess. R, B. Okay, so the enemy is trying to shoot me or something, I guess. Ah, so it's like this. I'm trying to understand how do you move. 
So the enemy on the bottom right is also moving a bit. It's actually an interesting game. Can I shoot down that? Come on, come on, almost there. Almost there. I still don't get what the solar wind does, but maybe it's for the best. Now I'm trying to shoot the enemy. And it blow up. Very nice. And I even got one point. Okay, so again, I think it's very, very interesting as a concept. Even the fact that by default, this operating system has mostly video games, funny one and not funny ones and then Bible passages. So to end this video about Temple OS, I gotta try to read another Bible passage. Maybe it will inspire me. So let's try to shift F7. Give it a bit of time to actually load up something from the Bible. It's necessary. Okay, so we have got our passage. This time is Luca 2356. And the year returned and prepared spices and ointments. Okay. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came onto the sepulchre, sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain, certain others with them. And they found the stone roll. Okay, so this is when they actually discover that Jesus is not inside of the sepulchre. Yeah, that is a very exciting part of the Bible. Like, it's a big shock. It's like something you wouldn't expect if you're reading them, the, I mean, the Bible in chronological order. But there were some, like, how do you say it? You could guess that it was going to happen because of some things that the main character, Jesus, had said previously, like saying that on the third day, stuff like that. You, you could guess that he was going to come back. But when it actually happens, maybe you hadn't put all the connections in your mind and so it comes like as a bit of a shock. So it's a very interesting passage on the Bible. I think it's a, a good part. So I, I picked the right one, right one. Very interesting. And as you can see, yeah, like it was foreshadowed by some elements. As you can see in uh, 24, 8, and they remembered his words and they returned, blah, blah, blah. So when they say, and they remember his words is because he actually foreshadowed it. So yeah, like saying the son of a man, sorry, the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. So you could understand it was going to happen, but maybe you hadn't put the connection together. So comes like a bit of a shock, like good passage. Thank you, Temple S. I think I'm done with you. And I'm also done with putting joke answers into my surveys. So next time I think I'll do XFC. <laughs> Bye.